Bread making is an art of its own. There are so many breads around the world, and because of that, everyone can find their favorite. For me, nothing beats homemade bread. Not only does your home smell of a fresh bread for hours after it's baked, but it brings smiles to the whole family. The only problem is, you just can't stop eating it. In a big bowl, mix together 560 grams of 00 flour, or one with at least 12 grams of protein, and 190 grams of strong flour. To the combined flours, add in batches 600 milliliters of 35 degrees temperature water. It will be a bit of a sticky process, but you can also use a spoon to mix everything if you wish. I just like using my hands, it's very relaxing. Once the flour is well hydrated, leave the shaggy dough to rest for about 10 minutes. Now, sprinkle over 15 grams of salt and 3 grams of dry yeast. Wet your hands well. This will prevent the dough from sticking too much to your hands. With your right hand, start folding the dough from the outside inwards. For each fold, turn your bowl slightly in a clockwise direction. This will make mixing everything together easier. As soon as you see that the dough starts sticking to your hand, wet it again under water and continue mixing by folding. If you find mixing with hands too cumbersome or don't like having sticky fingers, you can also use a wooden spoon. Mix the dough for at least 5 minutes, but not more than 8. Scrape all the dough stuck to your hand and sides of the bowl and cover it with either plastic wrap or a tight lid, making sure to let out all the air. Leave the dough to rest in a warm and dark place for 20 minutes. Wet your hands well and let stir the sleeping dough a little bit. With your hands, Go below the dough, grab it, lift it up and fold it over. Do that for about 4 times. Now, with both your hands, go beneath the dough, from the sides in the middle, grab it well, lift it up and fold it like it's a blanket. Do this process 5-6 to six times. Each time, turn the bowl 45 degrees. As you can see, the dough is taking a nice round shape. Cover your dough again with either plastic wrap or a tight-fitting lid. Place your dough in a warm place to rest for at least 2 hours or until it doubles in size. Flour your workbench well and tip your risen dough on top of it. Flour the top of the dough as well. With the help of a bend scraper, Start folding the dough as we were doing throughout the whole process. Firstly, fold it over from the four sides and after that, use the blanket fold motion until you get the roundish dough that isn't sticking to the surface anymore. Prepare another bowl with a clean towel and flour it well. Trust me here, you really need to flour it well. Otherwise, the dough might stick and you'll have a bit of a problem getting it out of it later. Pick up your dough and drop it into the bowl. Flour the top and cover it with a towel. Now let it rest for another hour in a warm place. After 30 minutes, prepare your Dutch oven and heat up the oven itself. Place your Dutch oven into the oven and heat it up to 240 degrees Celsius. After 30 minutes, take the Dutch oven out and tip your dough from the floured bowl into it. Of course, being careful not to burn yourself. At this point, you can either take some scissors or a knife and draw and make beautiful designs on your dough bread. Cover the whole Dutch oven with a lid and place everything into the oven for 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, do a quick test with a wooden skewer or a chopstick to check if the dough is cooked through. If you see some dough sticking to the skewer, 
place the bread back into the oven for about 10 minutes. But make sure that you place it in uncovered. Lower your temperature to 200 degrees Celsius, unless you want your bread to be a little bit darker and crispier. Once done, take the bread out of the Dutch oven and place it onto a cooling rack to chill for at least two hours. Once it's cooled, the crust will crackle nicely. Just listen to this. The bread is truly irresistible and delicious. The crust is crunchy, the inner part is fluffy, and it holds its structure well. What is your favorite bread type? Comment down below and let me know what you enrich your bread with. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe for more enticing and delicious bite-sized recipes for your enjoyment. Until next time, bye-bye!